Okay, Boker Tov. All right, today's stuff is Nun Aleph 51. Um, can you pick up, I always feel, think I'm going to get here. Here, it's self at 7.30, and then it's always late. Okay, anyway, we start here with um, the very bottom of Nomen Amad Bet, and we're in the middle of a really interesting discussion about um, what type of act constitutes both an act of Avodah Zarah and Yichayim, which is more discussion of Sanhedrin, what type of things are you chayv misa for, or is it not you chayv misa for? And then what it's going to turn into, which we've already addressed to some degree, is what type of an act is considered offering something to Avodah Zarah that makes that thing forbidden in Hana'ah. Because the Gemara discussed using the stones of Markulis to uh, line the streets, and if something is a Tikrovis Avodah Zarah, there's no way you could do Bitto. So the question is, how could you use the streets? And the answer was, it's not a Tikrovis. It might be an object of worship itself and require Bitto, and we'll get to that, but even, the stones that are struck, even the stones that are thrown. But it's not a Tikrovis. Why not a this is the way you make an offering, you throw. And the Gemara seems to say, well, said that in order for something to be a Tikrovis, to be Yasser and Hana, you have to apply the uh, the sort of the Beis Hamikdash type of a model, um, that it has to be the language of the Gemara, which is a language we're going to see again, was Ke'en Pni. Cane panim, like you would do inside the base of Mikdash. Why would you not do that with a stone? So there's you could focus on the object or the act, either because the stone is not something that would be eaten or edible and so on. Um, that's what sort of the emphasis Rashi has. Tos is based on a Gemara. Tos is based on a Gemara we're going to see later today. Focuses on the act that even though you throw things as a as an as an avoda in the base of Mikdash, um, you don't. It's usually something that splatters, you know, or you burn something. But you don't just throw a whole object. Okay, and that we're going to. What do you mean? That. Don't you throw? Like when you're on top of the mizbeach, would you like throw that's the? Not, that's not an avoda. Okay, the uh, burning the agar is not an avoda. Okay, anyway, so burning the Taurus is an avoda. But anyway, that's not bad. That's not the act of throwing. That's the act of burning. Anyway, okay, so that's the idea about what defines the krovas to be yasser behana. We'll see more about that today. I should mention, and somebody mentioned at the end of yesterday's uh, shear that. Um, this came up a while ago. I think it's more than 10 years ago, I'm remembering. It seems like it was 15 years ago or so. Anyway, um, this whole issue about Indian hair that was used for wigs, hair from India. There was a whole question about did they shave their hair first in some religious ritual? Did they do did they do something in front of this, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the statue? Not in front of the statue. Who did it out of a definition of Tikrobus or not? I think a lot of the issues was that people had the facts wrong. But anyway, somewhere along that line was the discussion of what defines Tikrovis? Even if it's used in Avodah Zarah, it might not be Tikrovis to be Asur Behana'ah. So that's <coughs> this issue here about the stones. Now the Gemara is getting to a similar discussion. We're going to circle back to Tikrovis, but it's getting into a similar discussion of what's considered an Avodah to be Chaya for Avodah Zarah, for a Jew or a non-Jew for B'nai Noah. So the general principle is either one of the classic Avodot, you know, Shrita, Zrika, Akhtara, etc., or um, it is, um, or it is, uh, ke- the, the natural way, it's So throwing the stone to Marcolis would be chayim, okay? Shechting an animal to Marcolis, even though it's not the way that normally would be would be worshipped, would also be chayim. So the Gemara's question is, what exactly constitutes shechting that you're chayim? Or something like Marcolis, or let's say an avodazar that you do some stick dance with. Okay, does it have to shecht an animal? So here the Chiddush is the Chiddush of wh- wh- whoever it was. Um, where was it? Rav Yehuda uh, Marav was that if the avoda uses a stick, then the stick could rep- replace an animal. And if you break a stick, that's like shechting an animal, even though that's not the normal form of avoda. Okay, and that was his chiddush. All right, so let's pick up from there. Amar Rav Yehuda Marav, so it's about eight lines from the bottom. No, not bad. Amar Rav Yehuda Marav. Avoda kochem sheovdino sevimakel. You use a stick, but let's say to twirl it. But because that stick is the object that you use to do the avoda, then it can be the object that plugs in to this idea of the four classic avodot, even though that's not the way this is worshipped. Okay? So if that's case, if you break a stick, it's like shechita, but if you throw a stick, that's nothing. So when you break a stick, it's like shechting an animal, so you just replace animal with stick. Whatever, Zark Nami have like King Zrika to replace blood with stick and have it like Zrika Saddam. Once we're allowing this to now be the object, so Amalei be in Zrika Mishkaberes Vuleka. No, 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 no. Zrika is not just throwing like a football. Zrika is you throw something and it splatters on the Mizbeah. It like so that's it, it's not so. Therefore, if you throw an object and it remains whole, that's not enough like the act of Zrika Saddam 
in the base of Mikdash. Okay, that whereas Shrita, at least it's similar that you broke something. Now we could say, well, Shrita is not just breaking something, Shrita is breaking something from which some liquid flows out, right, yeah. and that liquid is, allows you to do some avoda with that liquid, right? Where exactly you do draw the lines of comparison. But you do understand that throwing and splashing blood is quite different than just throwing something and letting it land somewhere. So he says that's not enough similar. So if I throw, like, let's say, like, you know, a glass, whatever it is, and it and breaks, breaks yeah. that would be a problem. Presumably, if the glass was used in the avoda. Okay, because you have to be able to use, substitute the normal thing, which is the animal, with this object. And what allows you to do it, according to Rava, is that this object is generally used in the avoda. Okay, so now, a space. So we asked about this. Suffolk so if you have a type of avoda that you're feeding dung to it, or Rashi says it means feeding. Tosa says that it means um, basically you're, you're smearing dung on it or something like that. Okay. Oh, you pour out urine in front of it. Now, again, if this is the normal way it's, the avoda is, then there's no chiddush. So it must be that there's not the normal way the avoda is. So why is this? So I get the case of the bedpan of urine. Um, that's like dumb. That's a liquid. It splatters. El etzoa ma'isuka mishkaberes. But if you're throwing, you know, dung or whatever, you know, it doesn't. It, it just stays whole. So that's an easy answer. But soa lach lecha. No, we're talking about loose uh, excrement that it actually does splatter. Very lovely. Yes. Anyway, um, but Tosos points out what's not explicit and what the Gemara seems to have lost sight of. But Tosos insists we're still assuming is that this would only work if these objects were used in normal avoda of this of this idol okay so if you use urine or excrement in some other avoda and now you're using it this way you're high but something has to allow this item to take the place of the normal animal that you would do a shrita with and so on okay that seems to have been bracketed but Tosus insists that that's still the assumption okay so now the Gemara says like this let's say this is the, tie, tied into a debate of tonight you slaughtered a grasshopper Okay, How do you so you, a you, you, you take a grasshopper and you take your little pocket knife and you cut its throat. Okay, so it's not a halachic shkita, okay, but it's the act of cutting its throat. So, Rabbi Yehuda says Yechaya, for a vote and the Chamim say you're exempt. My law, Bakamifli, let's say this issue of Rava is exactly the debate. The Marsava Arminan Kein Zvicha, Marsava Arminan Kein Zvicha, one says that it has to be like slaughtering. Okay, and or it's funny. Loba in and Kane's Vicha sounds like you're being lenient, but but but, but the way Rashi reads it, that Loba in and Kane's Vicha here means that it's not sufficient that something is Kain Zvicha. The one who says Chayev says, Okay, this looks like slaughtering, that's enough. And the other one says, No, that's not sufficient. It has to really be a real shrita, and shechting a, a, a grasshopper is not a real shrita. Okay. So, and again, Tosos insists that the case is that this grasshopper was used in another context for this Avodah Zara. Again, the Gemara is not revisiting that point, but Tosos is insisting that that's still assumed. It's a really good question of whether the hybrid is possible. Because of the grasshopper. Not a cow, right. grasshopper, but, but not a stick. Either. Right, I'm going to get to that in a minute, because grasshopper presents an interesting middle possibility. But Tosos wants That's to cool insist that all of these are <laughs> all of these are cases where the object was used in its classic Der Chavoda. Okay, so let's say this is a debate whether this pseudo shrita works. So the Gemara says no. It's not enough that it be a pseudo shrita. Ella came pnim. It has to be mamish like it's done in the base of mikdash, which presumably means you're going to have to use like a real animal. You'll have to use a real cow. Now, where, where do you draw the line? Let's say you did it with a uh, with a chicken. Let's say you did it, you know, with a deer. Right, where exactly do you draw the line is not clear, but Ke'en Pneem is a higher category than Ke'en Zvicha and seems to sort of insist that the object, you can't borrow an object that's used in another form of this Avodah Zara. You have to do it with a standard type of an object. Okay, so that seems to be the debate. So the Gemara says, Lo, not necessarily. Everybody would say it's not enough that it look like a shrita. It has to be really similar. Presumably use a classic object. So therefore, what's the debate? Uh, a, a grasshopper is different because a grasshopper does have a, a neck. Okay, it's not a stick. 
Okay, it's interesting that it focuses on the long <coughs> neck. Like, what's it contrasting it to? Like, a, sh a fish would be different. You know, maybe an ant would yeah, be different. Yeah, explain it here, which is actually helpful. You okay, let me most... finish, and then you say what you say. So anyway, but that's, <coughs> so the way the Gemara makes it sound is, and this is the way Rashi reads it, but again, Tosos isn't happy. The Gemara makes it sound like you can't borrow objects that are used in other places of the, of the Avodah Zara. You have to do a normal shrita. But even within saying you have to do a normal shrita the way you do it in the base of Mikdash, the question is, well, what type of animals? I'm fine with that. No sticks, no tsoa, no urine. You got to be animals. You got to be blood. But like, what type of animals? You know, can it be a chicken? Can it be a deer? Can it be a chagav? So the Gemara saying is, well, that's the debate. Is a chagav close enough to a behemoth? Okay, so chicken and deer, presumably, yes, because you have other birds, you have other behemoth. Chagav, that is the debate, and this has nothing to do with the fact that this Chagav might be used elsewhere in this Avodah Zara. It's just a question of the parameters of Cain Pinin. That's the way, the simple read of the Gemara, that's the way Rashi says it, but Tosa still insists that this still is, that still the, the, other, the other thing that's going on here is we're still assuming that this grasshopper is being used in some other way with this Avodah Zara. If it wasn't being used at all with this Avodah Zara, that would be, it, that, that would be too different. But anyway, that's not clear in the Gemara. Yes, Michael. Yes, it's especially about Chagav, it's not just all insects. You're saying most of them, the insects it is, they don't really have like well, a neck. Insects, like locusts we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, grasshopper. yeah. No, we're saying most insects though have a head very close to the body, so right. they don't have a, a neck. Right. But some types actually do have like an elongated thin, neck. Yeah, they have like this thing protecting the front of the, the thorax, okay. which is the appearance of a neck. There you so, go. Uh, okay. So, so you know, really right. can't, obviously can't be slaughtered, right. but his appearance is right. Right. Okay, so the simple meaning of this Gemara is that we're totally rejecting Rafa. We never borrow objects that are used in some other way of this avoda. It only has to be just like the base of Mikdash. But even saying that, and within the standard objects, the question is, okay, but how broad or narrow do you define the objects? How broad or narrow do you find it has to be a behemoth? It has to be a lot, an animal. And that's the debate about the grasshopper. Okay. Amar of Nachman, Amar Rav, Amar Rav, Amar Rav. Avodah, now, that was about are you chayef or avodah zara, which is a Sanhedrin discussion. Now we're going to circle back to does it become tikrovis and forbidden in Hana'ah. Okay? So, Amarav Nachman Amarav Barvu Amarav. Avodah's kochavim sha'ovdino sabamakel. Back to you normally do some swirling of a baton with it. So much for the truly. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the avodah zara cure leaders. Okay, so, shover makel bifanea chayav in eseret. If you broke it, you're chayav and the makel is forbidden. So, what he's adding here is first it's like rava. This is considered to be a type of an avoda, shrita, whatever. But what he's also it's adding is that it's, that it's tikrovis, which sort of makes sense. If you're considering it like a shrita, so we should say it's also. Zorak maka lefaneha chayav ve'ena neser. If you throw a stick, you're chayav, but it's not necessary. Now, why is it not necessary? It's presumably because it's not ke'en tikrovis. It's throwing a whole object. It's not splattering of blood. It's not like a shrita, like we said before. Now we're using that idea we said before, the difference between shavar and zarak, to say that that defines whether the object is a tikrovis. Okay, it's like the Gemara said before, right, about the throwing of the stones. It's not ke'en tikrovis. It's not ke'en kni. Okay, presumably because it's a whole thing, it didn't splatter, and so on. Or you could he say, says you're chayav now, before he said the question is, why are you chayav if this is not a normal derech avoda? So you could say he's even more machner than rava. He considers it enough derech avoda, even though it doesn't splatter. To be chayav, he has a broader definition of, of, of ke'en p'nim, ke'en zvicha, but for tikrovis, a narrower definition. Rashi says, we're just, we're just, just going to assume that this is derech avoda sabakak. So even like the Marcolis, we're like, we're, we're bracketing the fact about whether you're chayv or not. I'm willing to say, even in a case, which makes sense, because the focus here is about what constitutes tikrovis. So the point is, I don't want to get into that debate about what constitutes avoda. Let's assume that this is the classic way of being ovated. You're chayv regardless. Whether you throw it, whether you break it, anything you do, you're chayv. It's classic avoda. Something could be classic avoda and you could be chayv. And nevertheless, the object is not tikrovis. I'm surprised. Okay, well, but okay, that's what we said before about Marcoli's. Mm -hmm. Classic of is throwing a rock and the object is not tikrovis. Okay, for it to be tikrovis, it has to be like a tikrovis in the base of Mikdash. Again, presumably, the difference not being an object, because here it says breaking a stick is tikrovis. So presumably, even though the object is not food or edible or whatever, plant life, animal life, etc., nevertheless, if it, it could be tikrovis if you do something that the act is like the act in the base of Mikdash. But stop throwing something whole does not make it tikrovis. Even though Avodah Zarakach. 
Right. But I'm, I'm surprised. So though. that's I mean, why like, in the case of the, what do you call it, of the Whigs, right? If, again, I forget what the exact details were, but let's assume that the case was they went in front of the idol and they shaved their hair as a derech avoda and they placed the hair in front of the altar, in front of the idol, and then they used that hair and they took it out. Okay, so anybody who did that would be chayev for avoda zara if it's derech avoda sarakach, but that's not the, that's not tikrovas. Right, because it's not the way you do a, a, an offering in the base of Mikdash. Okay, it's just like throwing a stick, throwing a throwing a stone. Okay, see what's so, weird is unless say, you say that shaving the hair is like breaking the stick, that would be an interesting question. <laughs> that would be interesting. Is she, if, if, if shaving the hair like being breaking the stick? Yes. What I'm trying to understand is like the whole point. I thought if you do a game, I tell him a second gamani. So you're trying to emulate what they're doing, not that we're. I know, I mean, you know, it, it, it is very bizarre, but you are high for doing Der Havodah But I guess your point is that in terms of the issue of Tikrovas, why don't we define it by their definition? Right. It's an interesting question We've been about... Having this discussion... Right, I mean, I think it's an interesting question in general about, about, like, is there something, I don't know if I would say ideological going on here, but something about controlling the, your legal system, meaning, you know, on the one hand, you're right, we have to look at how you do it to decide... If somebody throws a stone to Baal Pa'or, are you Chayev or not? So we have to go ahead and inquire about how people do it or whatever. But I don't know. I guess there's something about, like, like saying, like, we'll define if this is us or based on what the priests tell us, you know, or what the Buddhist monks tell us is considered a Tikrovas for them or not considered a Tikrovas for them. You know, there seems something almost very foreign about that. Um, you know, maybe in the act of worship itself, I, I don't know, I have to think about it. There seems something, I, I could understand a desire not to have to import some other religion's definition to define whether something, although you have to do it for the avoda, because maybe there, there's no choice. But I, I, I hear the question. And it also seems that we're mass or other things, and you know, to, to worry about like, all these are hoka to hoka, we can't even like, you know, you know, getting back to the inn, put it in whatever. I mean, I know the different. Yeah, but there was a reality. No, no, I know, lived but, in a world where if you were worried about that, you could walk on the streets. Right, so, but this seems know. so like close. One I thing understand. Like, you know, so I understand. Didn't extend on the it other hand, all. it's so all pervasive that you can't that that you have to draw you know lines. Um, okay, so now the says like this. Okay, so that's very interesting. Let you find your chaya, but it's not and and it doesn't have to be a food, but it has to be kainti krovis in terms of the act. It has to be like mishta beret. Okay. El Meata says Gemara, Avni base Markulis, back to that, what we discussed yesterday. Bamaye Asru, why are they a problem? The actual, uh, that's just like your throwing of the stick. Now, yesterday we said they weren't a problem. So let's take a look. Maybe it means the original three that you put up. All right, let's take a look. Amalei, Afli Didi Kashali, I was, I had that problem. Shaili, the Rabbi Baravua, and he, I asked Rabbi Baravua, Rabbi Baravua, the Chia Barav, the Chia Barav, the Rav, okay, went all the way up the chain. Amalei, Nase, Kimigdal, Avodas Kochavi, that when you throw the stones, okay, they become like a, a new little, they increase the tower and the pile, so they become basically a Dover Haneva. So you're right. The stones aren't usser that you throw that somebody throws are not usser esti crovis, but they're usser because oh, they connect they to they, they the dover haneva. They don't. Okay? I mean, if they incidentally did, but it wasn't the avoda, that might not matter. That's not the avoda. Okay, but they connect to the pile, and therefore they also become a dover haneva, which is why if the non-Jew dismantled it and paved the streets, you can use it, because it's bitto, bitto can happen on our Zara, not on Tikrovas. But if a Jew can't just go stomp, take the stones, because that obviously, and that's our Mishnah, right? Remember, our Mishnah says that the stones are forbidden. So our Mishnah makes it clear that the stones are forbidden. So, and so how do you get that the stone, what he's referring to is the Mishnah. And the answer is fine, they're forbidden, but not as Tikrovas, it's forbidden as a Vodazara itself, which allows for bitto. Okay, so the Mishnah says like this. Okay, but you haven't been over them yet when you threw them. So if you say designating something as an Avodah Zarah, if a non Jew does, it becomes forbidden immediately, I get it. Then as soon as you threw it, you made it into an Avodah Zarah. <coughs> but if it only becomes an Avodah Zarah until it's worshipped, the throwing of it, at that moment, it was a tikrovas. Okay, and halachically not a tikrovas, based on what you said. But it won't become an avodazar until the next guy comes along and worships it. So tishtari, it should be permissible. The halo palcha, nobody worshipped it. Amalei, ko achas v'achas nasis avodaz kochavim v'tikrovas l'chaverta. So he says, you're right. Okay, but if you've got here your pile of stones, and here, are, right, let's say you started with three, okay, 
And now it reminds me of my days of, in the schoolyard throwing cards and all the cards mm -hmm. are like scattered nearby. And you have all these thrones that people threw that are sitting, that are nearby, <coughs> that were thrown at it. So what missed. it says is, <laughs> as soon as, if, if this was stone number one that was thrown at it, at the moment it was so, thrown, it was Tikrovas. Then comes a go, that's when this guy number one threw me. Okay, he goes away. Comes along five minutes later, five days later, guy number two, and he throws stone number two. When he threw stone number two, that was an act of avoda to all of the stones that were there, including the one that had been thrown by the guy before him. So this stone number two was a tikrovas to this, it, so it, then there's now a moment one change identity. So, so, to so at, when the stone number through two is thrown, stone number one becomes an Avodazara. Okay? So that's his point. So the only stone that would not actually be an Avodazara would stone. only be, and as a Tikrovitz, it doesn't become Asr, right? So the only stone that would actually. No, the Kovit is worse, that's what you said. But it doesn't become Asr because it's not Mishkabarit. Okay, if it were Tikrovitz, it would be worse. Mm -hmm. But but it's not, it doesn't halachically become Tikrovitz. So every stone only becomes Asr when the next stone is thrown. So the last stone, though, should be Mutter. Okay, so let's read that. that. Doesn't much. Right. So, like, so I understand that. I understand that. Kol achas nasis avodos kochavim v'tikrovis lechaverta. When you throw it, okay, basically it becomes a tikrovis to the next one, and it itself will become an avodah zara when the one after it is thrown. Yehachi says the Gemara basraisa miatishtui. The last one should be permitted. The last one has not yet been worshipped, and it doesn't halachically constitute a tikrovis. So he said to him, If you can find the last one, you're entitled to go take it. Okay? Fine. There's one stone there that's permissible. Go figure out which one it is. It's sort of like When you throw it, it becomes an act of avoda, and you're being obeyed the stone itself. So as the stone is flying in midair, since it's on its way to become part of that avoda zara and to be part of that pie hole, then the throwing of it is an act of not only, uh, of actually worshiping that stone as well. All right, I don't exactly get that, but fine. All right, so anyway, so even the last one is prepared. Okay, um, okay, so now it sounds like this. Um, where are we? Uh, okay, fine. Uh, Tna. Okay, so that's the argument. Much so, now we're going to see if this idea about what constitutes Tikrovis works, because let's look at our next mission. This is a mission we're going to see as soon as we turn the page. Matsuburosh Oksusu Ma'o. You found at the top of this Markolis, just like uh, garments and money, okay, lim, or vessels. And this would be classic types of offerings that would be made to the idols in like the Roman and Greek world. It wouldn't be shechting animals, it would be placing objects of value. Harelu Mutarim. Those are not considered Tikrovis. All right, so, and it's also the Gemara is going to deal with in a minute, why is it not noi? Okay, why isn't it like adorning it and considered noi? But it's not tikrovis. Now, that works so far with our idea because it's not mishtaberet. So it's not tikrovis. Parchile um, anovim, the atarochel shivalim, let's say you have clusters of grapes or like little like uh, crowns of, uh, of you know, of uh, wheat stalks, you know, like with the hair coming out or whatever, it looks very pretty. Vieno to shmanim basalatot and wine and oils and, and flour, and anything that similarly would be offered on the altar, a sort of forbidden. So this Mishnah seems to be giving a different definition of tikrovis, mm -hmm. right? These are things that didn't break, you know, I mean, even the wine, it doesn't sound like you threw the wine, it looks like you put a jug of wine, but certainly things like the grapes, right? The grapes didn't break, the, uh, the stalks of wheat didn't break, so this sounds like it doesn't need to break. It just needs to be an object that is normally present, that is normally like given as a tikrovas in the base on mikdash. Now grapes are now. The question is: Is grapes considered that object right. because of like bikurim? And then bikurim also. It's interesting. You like place it before the mizbeach, right? Or is grapes considered that way because from the grapes you would yeah. make wine? And from the, you know, so it's an interesting question. Well, either should be enough. E right. But I'm still wondering, like, which is the model that we're looking at, right? But anyway, but at least here, the point is, it doesn't matter exactly the act that's done. It matters the object, which is a very different model mm -hmm. than what we're saying, which it matters the act. Okay? So it says like this. Um, it's Came here sort of would mean like the object that would be used and the act. 
You have to, it would splatter if you actually did that with it. I'm not sure it's saying that that is what you did. So it's not being done the way it's done in the base of Mikdash, meaning maybe it's an object that would be used, but you're not actually anointing the oil, you know, pouring it on the Mizbeah. You're not actually offering it in that way. And you're not even doing this pseudo way. It's not one of these cases of like Mishtaberet, okay? I'm a Rav Amula. So anyway, this next mission works nice if you have a broader definition of Tikrobes, but it doesn't work with your narrower definition of Tikrobes. I'm a Rav Amula. That gets to my head, shaving the hair off. If you actually cut them off of the vine, the grapes, for the sake of putting them in front of this idolatrous altar, that's a type of a Mishta Beret. I guess it's like a type of a shechita or something, which is fascinating. Then it get, does get interesting about shaving the hair. Is that a type of, right? right. Is that the act of tikrovet? And also, right? also exclude the geographical dimension, right? We have the object, the right. back, but this assumes that oh, we right. necessarily, maybe. Right, does it have to be away. done if you're thinking about it? Or let's say you're doing it, but in your mind, this isn't the Masa Voda. I'm cutting it off the off the vine so that tomorrow I can offer to the <laughs> item. Right, exactly. It's yeah, I think that. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> the oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not, it's not, so, you know, it, it's a stretch, you know, absolutely. It doesn't sound like the idol's there. It doesn't seem like you're doing it as a masa voda. Okay, so it does sound like we have a broader definition. It, you don't need zrika mishta beret. And the Gemara is trying to squeeze this into that definition. All right, so it sounds like this. Um... So, uh, okay. So, Amarava, Amarava, So, and then the reason of Ksus and Mos, okay, Lim, would be because those are presumably are not a case of a son mitchilo lekach, you know, um, fine. And they're not, they don't have any aspect of Mishka Beret. Um, fine. Amarava, how do you know? Now, before we were saying, and this was what pushed Tosos to say by the case of grasshopper, that it was also that the grasshopper was used in another way. Because here the Gemara has, seems to have a very narrow definition. Okay, it's not, an, even if you shech the cow to Avodah Zara, if it's got a blemish, you're putter. It has to be mamish. Like, you know, at least not about, at least for being chaya for Avodah Zara, mamish like it was done in the base of Mikdash. Again, assuming that it's not Avodah Zarah, assuming that you're chaya here for the category of Cain Pni. Okay, one who offers sacrifices to the gods will be put under the ban, except for God alone. So that's that campaign, which is a higher stat, a higher criteria threshold than than you know Cain Zvicha. All right, and therefore nobody in the base of Mikdash, uh, it wouldn't matter that it's a cow or or whatever a sheep. It would have to be unblemished. So Havi bar Rava, so Rava asked, what are you talking about? We're talking about some type of a film in the eye. I don't get it. Even to God, we could bring that on an altar, on an altar outside the base of Mikdash, when altars were permitted. Do you think that you wouldn't be high if you bring it to Abu Zara? Like, even that is relevant to God. It's in the parsha, at least. And let's face it here, we're, doing, we're talking about a guy doing Abu Zara. He's not doing a worship in the base of Mikdash. Fine. It would be a case that wouldn't be good on a bomb, and a case that we're going to see that even for Bnei Noach doesn't count as a legitimate korban. Um, how do you know that Bnei Noach are forbidden? One wonders what category of Isra this falls under, since it's not the Sheva Mitzvah. But anyway, this is now an exact replica of a Gemara we had earlier. Amr Torah by Noach, and we know in the end Noach brought a korban. So it's, why does it say Mikol Hachai? Amr Torah, So Hachai, we're reading that all of its limbs are in good shape. So the Gemara says, one minute. No, Chai means that it can survive. It's not a trefa. And to tell you that a Bnei Noach can't offer up a trefa. No, milchachiot zeranafta. We learned that from to give for seed, assuming that a, and a trefa can't give birth. That's good if you assume a trefa can't give birth. But if a trefa can give birth, Michael and So how do you know to exclude trefa? We need call a chai to exclude trefa. I'm a cry itcha with you. Itcha b'dominucha. It has to be like you. So from there we know you're not a trefa. They can't be a trefa. So the says, How do you know? Maybe not was a trefa. No, tamim says perfect. 
But the Yom that's not a physical characteristic, says the Gemara. That means he's perfect in his uh, in his ways. Okay. Tzadik Sife. Okay, but it also says Tzadik. That covers that covers moral perfection. So Tami would be physical perfection. So the Gemara says, wait, there's different ways of being perfect without getting to physical. One has to do with your character, and the other has to do with your acts. But neither of them are talking about your physical sense, person. So the Gemara says, no. You can't say that Noach was trefa. Why not? These other days of Noach trefa, if you were trefa, what would God say? Bring animals that are just like you. I want other trefas just like you. What? That doesn't make any sense. So, so because it says like you, it only makes sense to demand that if the point was not a trefa. So from there we know not a trefa, and therefore Nikola Chai tells you it has to. All the limbs have to be in good shape. So hashed enough come itcha la hachio zera lam. So then why do I need lachio zera? I know from itcha not a trefa. I know from mikol achai the limbs are in good shape. What does lachio zera tell me? So the Gemara says imi itcha v'mina l'tzav seba alma. No, maybe you should just bring them along for company. Vafilu zaken vafilu saris. Even if it's an animal that no longer can give birth, kamash malan lachio zera, which is obviously the whole point. Bring animals so that they can be populated well. Anyway, so the Gemara now says fine. It, it could have a mum. But it can't be mechuser aver, which raises the question: When you offer a mechuser aver to an avodazara, are you not chayev because mechuser aver doesn't work even for bnei noach? Are we using the bnei noach person, or are we saying mechuser aver doesn't work because it's not kain pnim because it doesn't work for us on a bama? Right? It started off defined by our standard, just adjusted a little because of Obama. But in the end, it sounds like it's being based on their standard. That's not clear. Anyway, from here, you have the idea that a Baal Mum, you're not Chayiv unless it's a Vodasa Bekach. So that raises the question, why would you not be Chayiv for a Baal Mum, but you'd be Chayiv for a Chagav, a grasshopper? So that's why it also says the grasshopper was that they were already using the grasshopper. But it raises another question. Maybe there's a difference between Mum is a, is a very specific thing that invalidates, right? So maybe... Yeah, if you had a deer that was not a balmum, you'd be chayav. And if you had a cow that was a balmum, you'd be potter. Maybe balmum is a special category that that's clearly possible. Whereas something like deer, it's just the scope of animals for the Torah is narrower, but the scope for Vodazar is bigger. But still, that's different than a balmum, which is a very specific thing that puts it outside. Yes. We, we often talk about how um, a Vodazar is something for which there's we're actually chayav if we're if we're just for a thought without even necessarily an act. Well, okay. Uh, but here, here powerful, Amasa, yeah. where we're talking about acts, yeah. we have an example where, right, right. The where actual you, act you try to, to do the act and you fail, <laughs> exactly. and you're not high. Exactly. The act does have to be really specific to really be high. Okay. So this is going back to the point that would sort of been in the background that that certainly if you do a classic avoda your chayav even though it's not a even though it's not a vodas of okay shenemar v'loyiz b'chod etivchehem lasirim asher him zofchim al pnei asadeh okay so im enu in lechedarka now we don't need that to tell me that you can't worship an avoda zara the normal way it's worship tchsiv echayav do agayim elas aloyem v'asachim gamani so how do they worship so that already tells you it's forbidden to do it their way. So then why does it say don't slaughter? To tell you, even if slaughtering is not their way, because it's a classic avoda, you're chayav. Tanei you lo kedarka, okay, which is what the assumption we've been working on. And then the the basic thing that we've been focused on on this staff, in addition to what defines tikroves, is if you do a shechita, how, what, what defines the parameters of doing a shechita when that's not avodas of the kach? What type of act, what type of animals, etc. So the Gemara says, Is that what you need it for? Don't you need it for what we teach in the Brisa? That the Ishtar Shia and the Pasuk of is in the context of if you have a Korban, bring it to the base of Mikdash. Don't shecht it out of the base of Mikdash. That will lead to a Vodazara. That's basically the context. Okay, so the basic focus of the Pesukim is don't bring Kachim Bachutz. So the Gemara says, before you get to lo yizbuchu od, to tell you that that's telling you that uh, a form of a vodazara, we need it more for the immediate purpose of telling you what constitutes shchutei um, chut, okay? Ad kan hu medabir b'kachim shikitishim b'shasis rabamos. The beginning of the pasuk, lo yizbuchu od, at zivchehem, is talking about animals that were uh, sanctified when you already, there was a base of mikdash and you weren't allowed to bring on an altar. The Ikrivan b'shasis rabamos. 
sorry, and Shemem weren't. That would be the most severe thing. You sanctified this animal out when there was already a base of Mikdash, when Bamas were forbidden, and you brought it on a Bama. So, and, and, and it says, you know, Venichrisa, you get Karis. Wherever it says, guard yourself less than don't, that's a negative prohibition. Okay, so the first part of the parsha talks about don't bring these animals outside the base of Mikdash, and you'll get kares, and that's if it was sanctified when there was already a base on Mikdash. Okay, but the Khan Ve'elach, after that point, after it says, etc., now it's turning to talking about an animal that was sanctified when there was no base on Mikdash. So that's not as bad. The original sanctity, it was it was originally intended and legitimately intended for outside the base of Mikdash. And then the base of Mikdash got built. So if I bring that animal outside the base of Mikdash, I transgress, but I don't get kares. So where do we know that from? Okay. Um, they were sanctified when there wasn't a base of Mikdash, so the original sanctity would have been okay to bring it outside, and now the base of Mikdash got built. The Zivchehem, the things that are already their sacrifices, so somehow I've already been sanctified, maybe even in a legitimate way, but now I'm insisting that they bring it to the base of Mikdash. The things that I've already permitted to you, that they were originally sanctified and could have been brought outside the base of Mikdash, but now bring it up in the Asadet. Don't, but now, you know, bring it, um, don't do it out in the field. Now that it's the base of Mikdash, bring it to the base of Mikdash. So that sort of like, you know, that's where the uh, the demons are and the goats are. So if you bring it there, it's Ki'ilu you obeyed over the Zara. That's a parenthetical comment. Okay, that's a positive mitzvah. How do you know that there's a negative mitzvah in terms of even if it was sanctified when there was no base on Mikdash? Tamalomar, Velo Yizbuchu Oret Zivcheihem. Okay, that tells you the Lord has said. Maybe you would get karate. Justice, yase and the Lord say, not karate. So let me sort of like read you the whole context because the way it's dividing up the Pasuk. Okay, I mean, what it's basically doing is saying the first set of those Psukim are talking about when it was sanctified when there was a base of Mikdash, and that's more severe. And the second part is that talking about when it was sanctified when there was no base of Mikdash. And the only Nachmina is the Okay. Okay, so that is all the Chi of Kares. And now we did the whole thing, you get Kares, whatever, now we repeat it. The low, now, of course, you would say that this probably is more descriptive than proscriptive, so that they should no longer, but it's being read as, and they shall no longer bring, that that is that last passage is being read specifically as even if they were sanctified when there wasn't a base on Mikdash, it still is prohibited, but you don't get cards. Anyway, so Velohi's Bechuet Zivchehem is not learned to tell me the halacha of a uh, uh, shechita, even if not a vodasa It's not telling me a halacha of a vodazara. It's telling me a halacha of shechute chut. So how can you use it for a halacha of a vodazara? So the Gemara says, I'm a rava, kari be velo yizbuchu, vakari be velo o. You're right, but there's an extra part of the pasuk. It didn't have to say velo yizbuchu o. The extra word o tells me that there are two prohibitions coming along here. Lo Yizbuchu is a prohibition for Shchute Chutz, even sanctified when there was no base in Mikdash. The Lo Ode is telling me that there is a prohibition of doing it to Avodah Zarah, even if it's not Avodah Zarah. So this becomes the basis. It's pretty funny. It's not a very clear puzzle. But this becomes the basis for everything we've been discussing until now, that even if it's not a Vodah if it's a classic Avodah Ke'en Pnim, you're Chaya for Avodah Zarah. So that's one question. What type of avoda are you high? That's like a Sanhedrin question. But what we really focused on is, 
what type of avoda, even if you're tzachai of mis and so on, makes the thing a tikrovas. And we have two definitions, right? We have a definition that it has to be like mishta beret, and the act has to be very similar. And then we have another definition, which seems the pshat of the Mishnah that we're about to read, which seems to distinguish between the type of object, but not the type of act. Okay, so let's take a look at this next Mishnah. This just continues. Let's just read this. This just sort of wraps up that point. Okay, Matzah Barosho Mos Ksuso Kalim. You found on the head of this, uh, this uh, whatever you call it, about this, the Markolis, you know, money or garments or vessels. They're permissible. It's not to crow this. For the type of thing that would be offered on the altar, again, even if not exactly offered in this form, like the grapes, okay, then then it does become forbidden. So this mission makes it sound very, very clear that it's not about this act of mishtaberet, it's about whether the object would be offered on the altar. But the Gemara reread it to fit into the model of mishtaberet, but that's certainly not the pshat. Okay, let's take a look at the Gemara. Minani Mili, where do you get this from? Amr Ebrahim Bar Yosef, Amr Yoshaya, Kazvech Romer, Batiras Shukut Sehem, basically Lehem, Eitz Ve'eve, and Kazir Vazava Sheri Mahem. It speaks about the things that are with them that are not only gold and silver, but even stones and bricks, um, and wood and stones. Kazvech Romer, Los Achmot Kazir Vazava Lehem. It only mentions gold and silver, which is something that clearly is annoying. Ha Ketzad, how do you put these together? So, Imayim Dum Yadal Lehem. Things that are with them, which presumably means to crow vest, but I'll get back to that in a minute, are similar to things that are on them. The same way things that you put on it, which are not to things you put on it, whatever, not as an offering, but to beautify it. So that's this category of noya votas, not to crow vest. Again, important to remember, there's three categories. Noy, krovet, and tashmish. Tashmish is you use some object, I don't know, some incense, some uh, incense shovel to burn incense with it. Okay, you're not offering the incense shovel. It's not noy, but it's a way you do, the, it's an object that you use to do the avoda. Noy is not something you offer, it's a way you adorn it, you make it look nice. And decrovis is something you offer. All of those are um, forbidden in Hanat. Tikrovis is the only one that you can't matter through Bitho. Okay, so presumably Kesef is a Havalehem is the issue about noy. Okay, imahem presumably is the iser of tikrovas. All right, so ha keitzad imahem dumi da aleim ma aleim davish shall noy asur sheinu shall noy mutar af imahem davish shall noy asur sheinu shall noy mutar. So now it seems, if we read the Gemara this way, that we're introducing a new category for tikrovas. Tikrovas has to be something that is also serves some adorning purpose, which is very bizarre. Okay, so that's but it's saying this broader category of eitz va'even, which is not gold and silver. Kesef is a hag, so it's broader because it's tikrovas. But what we learn out from the parallel is even the eitz and even have to be some have to be beautiful, have to be presentable. Okay, which raises you know which okay. So let's keep on going with this. This seems to now be a new. A new criteria for tikrovas. Okay, so the Gemara says, Why do you link it that way to narrow the definition? Let's link it the other way to broaden the definition. The same way imahem includes stone and wood, and it's a broader category, and there's no criteria, uh, presumably, of uh, beauty. Af alehem kosha alehem. So let's say even things on them, it's not it doesn't have to be beautiful. No, in came lo yamar alehem. Don't say alehem at all. Just say you know you know just just say just say the case about uh, wood and so on, and then I'll assume it's a broad definition. So the fact that in another place the Torah gives a narrower definition and only mentions gold and silver is telling so, so, tell me that at least in one case there's a narrower definition. It has to be things that are really beautified. And once that's clear in that case, I'll then go and apply it to the other case. Okay, so we've now introduced a new issue that it has to be something that beautifies, presumably even for Tikrovas. And that's going to explain why the first cases in the Mishnah are okay, the cases of the money and the vessels and so on. The question is, who said that those things didn't beautify? So the Gemara says, one minute. Um, uh, where are we? Um, um, uh, um, okay. Um, now, most of shall know you. You know, you scatter money on top of it or whatever. Maybe that looks makes it look nice. You know, like with the fountains that have like I don't know, you know, money thrown at it or whatever. Anyway, uh, yes. Anyway, I would be bekis kasha a little bit safari. No, it's not like these pretty gold coins that glitter. You have the money in a pouch, and the pouch is around the neck of the idol. That doesn't look so nice. I don't know. Okay, maybe some people think it does. If you dress it and close, it makes it look nice. 
So Amr Debei Rabbi Yanai Bixus Miku Pelos from Neches Oal will show. No, you don't put it on in a nice way. You don't put a nice scarf around it. You put it like it's like it's like you know you fold up your laundry and have it sitting on its head. Okay, Kli Davish Ol Noyu. That looks nice. Amr Papa Deschifale Meshchilta Areshe. You basically take some type of a bedpan and you turn it over its head. Now this is a little crazy. It introduces all these crazy criteria into the Mishnah or all these crazy circumstances in the Mishnah, which isn't there. And the Mishnah tells you the rule. Mishnah tells you the rule is if it's Karev HaGabi Mizbeach. So this is crazy. We're introducing, it's not about Karev HaGabi Mizbeach, it's about Noi. And now let me explain you how all these cases aren't Noi, even though they seem to be Noi. Okay, it's very, very strange. Why we don't just say the mission is about Tikrovas and it has to be Karev HaGabi Mizbeach? I don't know. I don't know why we don't say that. By the way, though, the other issue is, is that when we say this Imahem, is the Gemara assuming, like I read it, that Imahem means that it is a case of Tikrovas, and even within Tikrovas, we have this new definition that it has to be beautiful. I don't know why we should have a definition of beautiful for Tikrovas, okay? And why don't we use that before for all those discussions of sticks and other types of things? Mm -hmm. Or are we actually saying now that we're choosing to read this Mishnah, and this might help explain the other thing, as opposed to the way we read it on the Amad Aleph, we're now choosing mm -hmm. to read this Mishnah that these are all things of Noi. When you see the, 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 you know, the, the grapes and the this and the that, the context is, I mean, we're talking, don't forget, we're talking about Marcolis. Marcolis, the way you did it to Krovis was you threw stones. So maybe the Gemara here is assuming that none of these were to Krovis. All of these were there, put there just to beautify. If that's the case, you understand, I mean, it doesn't work with the mission of Kare Vagabi Mizdeach, but at least you understand why the Gemara wants to introduce the category of Noi. And Imahem okay. Alehem is, is a description of location. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Alehem means it's directly on it. It's like, you know, the scarf is wrapped around it or whatever. Imahem means it's nearby, but you can put things nearby that are there to beautify the thing itself. Exactly. Except when if it's Aleisha, it is Alehem. Right, right, that's true. Okay, but anyway, but so that at least explains this whole focus on Noi, okay, that it's seeing, reading this Mishnah through the lens of Noi of Odazara, not Tikrovis of Odazara. Okay, so now the Gemara says like this. Uh, <clears throat> now we get to clear a case of Tikrovis. Anything that's within the, um, you know, like within the Mechitza, like within the uh, uh, curtains, like there would be a curtain right near the idol. So if you go right into the Holy of Holies, Anything is considered a Tikrovis. The idol's holy. Okay, the idol's holy of holies. Anything is considered a Tikrovis. Okay, presumably you don't need Zrika Mishta Beret. You don't need Kare Valgabe Mizbeach. Anything placed in the holy of holies is forbidden. Okay. A few of my Mamelech Aser. Chutz Lukilkalin. Okay, outside of the curtains. Dover Shil Noi Aser. Shainu Shil Noi Mutar. Now we do seem like we're back to discussing, it, you know, making this a criteria in Tikrovis. So besides, like, it's so confusing. Like, it's a completely different set of definitions than the Yom Rav. It's not about Mishnah Barrett. It's not about Karev Lagabe Pnim. It's that what defines Tikrovis? Inside of the curtains, anything. Outside of the curtains, something that's Noi. Completely different definitions than we had before. Okay? I'm Rav Yosef Reb Chanina, Nektina. We, we have as a position, ain't kilkalin lola pu'or velola markulis. Things like pu'or and markulis don't have curtains and inner sanctums. Okay, that's just not the way they were worshipped. They were exposed and you would go and do it by the road and so on. Lamai. Now, which way does read that? Lekhumar or lekula? Ilema da fil pnim kichut stami vishari. Are you saying that no, even, even things that are near it, it has, it's like it was away from it and it needs to be noi. So the says, clearly you don't need noi. You, you defecate before it. So, you know, so clearly water and salt should also be a problem. Okay, no, the opposite. Since it doesn't have an inner sanctum, everything is the inner sanctum, and we don't have this criteria of noi. So now the Amad Bet has completely different definitions than the Amad Aleph, right? The Amad Aleph is about or in the Mishnah, is about Karev HaGabim Mizbeach, or Zrika Mishta Beret. It has to be like a Masa Tikrovis, or like an object of Tikrovis. Okay, and the Amud Bed here says that actually something in the inner sanctum, there's no definitions, everything is a Tikrovis, and something away from the inner sanctum, it's somehow defined by Noi or not Noi. Very, very strange how to make the two Gemaras fit together. Let's start the next Mishnah. Avodos Kochavim Shayelagina, we quoted this earlier. Okay, if an Avodos Zara had a garden in front of it, Oh, merchatz, or a bathhouse. 
So that's not really any of these. It's not a decrow vest. It's not a tashmish. You don't use it to do the avoda. Maybe you could say it's noy because it like beautifies the space, but it's not really beautifying the idol itself. So this is something that isn't really per se usr. Okay, but it's still connected to the idol. All right. So nani mehen shalobitova. You can get benefit from them without a sense of gratitude. Now, Rashi reads this two ways. One Rashi way reads this is you can use it without paying paying the fee. Okay, so you know, so don't pay money to the to the to the uh, to the house of the idol because then you're being you're giving fees to Avodah Zara. Okay, but Tosa says, and an earlier Rashi says that that's not what Shalobatova normally means. Shalobatova means without a sense of being grateful and gratitude. You know, so actually the opposite. If you pay money, it's a business. You know, you're not grateful to them. You know, sometimes you feel grateful. You know, somebody gave you a great haircut or whatever, even though you paid for it. Okay, but anyway, but the point is, so it, but it's the opposite. Like, don't do it without paying, and then you'll feel grateful and you'll have positive emotional connection to this house of Avodah Zara. Okay, nanny man shalobatova. You can do it without a sense of gratitude. They nanny man bitova, but not. Presumably for free or in some context that would be a, a feeling of gratitude. Now, let's say this bathhouse was owned jointly by the Avodah Zara and by John Smith. So, then you can have a sense of gratitude because then you could say you're grateful to John Smith, you know, you're not grateful to the church. Now we get to a line that we have been saying from the very beginning of this parak, or even earlier, but here it is in the Mishnah. An idol of a non-Jew, a Miyad, is forbidden as soon as it's created. And a Jew only wants its worship. And we'll see in the Gemara a position that's the exact opposite. So this becomes the question, at what stage does an idol become forbidden? Okay, let's just get through the point about the about the bathhouse, and we'll do the idol tomorrow. <laughs> Amar bai, betova betovas komim. The problem of great gratitude is if you're grateful to the priests. Shalo betova, shalo betovas komim. And that, so if you're grateful to the priests, it's a problem. If you're not grateful to the priests, it's not a problem. La fuge tovas of deha, deshari. But if you're grateful to the guy who's your bathhouse attendant and you give him a tip and you say, oh, Charlie, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much. It was so wonderful when I came here last week or whatever. That's fine. He's just a worker. So as long as your gratitude is focused on the workers and not on the owner, that's okay. It's nice. It's a good chiluk. Like you also think about it when you go, you know, and like you get a haircut or whatever. You go to the restaurant, you know, your waiter was so nice or whatever. It does sometimes rub off to your feelings about the institution. But like, okay, there's a difference between being grateful to the person who's serving you and being grateful to the institution. Okay, Ika the Masni Law Seva. Some teach this on the end of the Mishnah. If it was jointly owned, Nani men betova, then you are, it is okay to have, be grateful when you're using it. Amar bai betova, betova sacherim. So now Abai is being read as a stringency. Even when it's jointly owned, it's only okay if you direct your gratitude to, you know, the uh, the, the, the non Avodazara <coughs> owner. Okay? Betova, betova sacherim. Shalom betova, shalom betova sacherim. But, in that case of jointly owned, you have to make sure, like, hey, I'm not thankful to the priest. I'm only thankful to Joe Smith. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and so therefore, okay. So that's the case. Um, so, um, so if in the end, you know, you have to like not be grateful to the priests, even when it's jointly owned, certainly in the beginning. But but if in the beginning it's okay to be grateful to the workers, and it's, so then and so if, if you say in the beginning, in the beginning you can't be grateful to the priest, only grateful to the workers. But when you get to the end, when it's jointly owned, then you have more latitude, since it's also owned by Joe Smith. Right. So the first reading of Abai is lenient. It's like even if it's fully owned by the church or whatever, by the house of Zeus, you can be grateful to the workers. And therefore, if it's jointly owned, you can be grateful to the institution. You don't have to somehow in your mind divide the sense of I'm grateful to that owner and not that owner. But the second reading is more strict. The second reading is even when it's jointly owned, you have to divide in your mind which owner you're grateful to. Okay, so that's that. But the important thing there is that it does, even though it's there to beautify the land, it's not like an object that's placed on it or whatever. It doesn't constitute noise, and it's not per se forbidden. And then tomorrow we'll continue with this whole issue about when does the the actual idol become forbidden? At what stage? When it's made or when it's worshipped?